It's metal smithing tool time. As you can see, there is just a myriad of different types of metal spinning tools that uh, can be used for such a variety of different purposes. Uh, sometimes when you're just getting started out, it can be overwhelming to figure out what you really need uh, just to get in there and get started. So uh, I'm gonna address just kind of a, a general introduction to metal spinning tools. I probably do 90% of my spinning just with uh, what's called a basic spoon tool. So you can see this is just a polished piece of steel that's set in a, uh, a larger sort of wood turning tools handle. And uh, one side has been ground and polished flat and that's used for planishing or smoothing uh, some of the ripples and grooves that happen in the surface of the metal when it's being pressed on by the tool while being spun. And the other side is uh, just a gently curved surface that has a couple different radii built into it so that you can uh, roll or adjust the tool to get exactly the, uh, the kind of curvature that you want depending on what you're doing with your piece. So this is kind of my prime go-to tool and probably uh, one of the few tools that you need to just really get started. Uh, there's lots of variations on that. Um, there's other kinds of, of spoon tools that have different radii on the ends, different planishing surfaces, um, some that are fully rounded, almost like a, a hemispherical end to it. Um, and then others that have more specialty ends that have uh, been forged and polished uh, for specific jobs getting into uh, particular areas based on the design of the spinning that you need to do. And uh, most of these I've just uh, collected over the years. Uh, either they've been uh, given to me generously or I've found in um, used tool sales or flea markets or something like that. In addition to the, uh, the steel spoon tools, uh, I also made a, um, a wooden tool end and tested it on some spinning. This is Argentinian Lindum Vita wood, a very hard, dense wood. And I just set it in a uh, Thompson tool handle. It's a three quarter inch, 16 inch handle. And uh, that the wood is just held in place there with two set screws. But this actually works quite well on aluminum. Uh, I probably wouldn't use it on uh, copper or brass or anything that's more difficult to spin. But uh, that came out of a question when I was doing uh, some demos for a, uh, a wood turning group to see if that was even possible. So piqued my interest and I got that going. Um, as you've seen in some of my videos, a rolled edge is really typical for metal spinning. And uh, to get those started, as you might have seen in the, uh, the basic tea light video that I did, um, have these, uh, these custom modified pliers where the ends are bent and polished so that you can go in, grab the edge of the metal and put a little crimp or bend into it that'll reinforce it and set the area where you're gonna start the, uh, the curvature. And there's you know many different kinds of pliers that can be modified based on how you like to work, the type of spinnings that you're thinking of doing. Um, I've not seen anyone making these. Um, for sale, uh, but it's it's not too difficult of a modification for some uh, some basic pliers. Related to rolling in the edge, uh, some people like to roll a very tight bead on the end, and so a, a roller tool uh, can be very useful for that. This is just a, a, a wheel that freely spins that has a groove in the end held in place with a rivet there and uh, you can press that as the metal's curved over on itself, you can press it to really tighten up that bead. Um, you've seen in a lot of other uh, metal spinning processes that you do need to occasionally trim the metal. And so uh, depending on the tools that you already have, if you're a wood turner, then any basic scraper will be able to uh, trim the softer metals like copper or aluminum. I've seen lots of metal spinners that uh, don't do much wood turning, uh, make a lot of their own tools from old files. You can see the, the texture and handle there on this old file that was then ground and polished and uh, have a, a ground relief there to make it into a scraper. This works quite well. Uh, also, there's a variety of other kind of homemade tools that I've done and I've seen other people do for a variety of purposes. Uh, there are, and I'll probably do another video on 
the wheel tools that you might have seen more production shops using that give you uh, less friction and greater leverage on your pieces to enable you to spin heavier metal, larger pieces, things like that. Uh, for a particular project I was doing, I made uh, kind of my own version of that. This is a little uh, wheel, for an extra wheel for rollerblading and it had a built-in bearing and set that into kind of a custom end that I fabricated. And again, just set into the typical tool handle and everything. Uh, but I did this because I was doing some experiments to spin textured metal and see if I could spin the metal without losing uh, the texture that was already etched into the metal there. So um, that was why I made this particular tool. And if you've seen lots of other videos of lots of other shops that they have tons of different tools and forms and chucks and everything for a variety of different purposes. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me when I post future videos. Thanks for stopping by.